Somebody told me once that they thought I was a tap dancer at one point and decided to play drums. They call me Sugarfoot and I concentrate my grooves on the bottom end. The Sugarfoot, that's your name. I hated it. I didn't sound cool at all. I said, Sugarfoot, I'm not answering to that. But over time, that's all people came to know, Sugarfoot. They didn't know Jonathan Martin. And I'm not playing drums, I'm playing music. And I can make you dance if you let me. So if you want to see some of that, here we go. He was the drummer for some of the biggest tours the world has ever seen, playing with the Jacksons, Madonna, Elton John, George Michael, Janet Jackson, and the one and only King of Pop. He was Michael's drummer for nearly three decades and garnered a worldwide reputation for his one-of-a-kind playing style and live showmanship, especially his behind-the-back cymbal choking technique. Join us as we dive into the genius of Jonathan Sugarfoot Moffat. The world knows him as Sugarfoot. His signature foot technique and incredible speed earned him this nickname very early on in his career. There was another local band uh, named The Spectrum. We love the way you play, we need a drummer. And they say, all right, everybody in the band has nicknames. You gotta get you a nickname. But when, and when they heard me play my bass drum technique. Sweet foot, he got that sweet foot. We're gonna announce you as Sugarfoot, that's your name. I hated it. <laughs> Michael Jackson simply called him Foot, and one of his many strengths was emulating the drum machines that were on the original recordings of the songs he was performing. Check out his rock-solid kick drum groove in the Michael Jackson track Jam, where you can also see him bringing up his left hand to play a quick hi-hat opening. or in the verse section of Black or White where Moffat is playing with a swing feel. In fact, during his first trip to Drumeo, he said that the kick drum sound is the foundation of his drum kit playing. So when I learned, started learning records off of records, but I started also hearing and, and picking up on the bass lines and figures. So I started combining the bass line figures, and to be able to do that, I had to get my foot really fluent to do both patterns, you know. That developed my style of playing from the bottom up, so to speak. He definitely has a lot of endurance with his bass drum foot, as you can see in this clip from one of his many clinics he gave around the world. Another innovative part of his playing is the way he uses multiple bass drums on his kit to create melodic lines. Check out how he played the song If by Janet Jackson and turned it into a much more intricate and melodic part. Or listen to what Moffat plays live in Madonna's song Keep It Together. Keep, keep it together. In March 2023, when Jonathan was out for his second trip to Drumeo, I asked him in his live lesson how he got interested in melodic bass drum playing, and he explained how it all started from watching a B3 organist when he was a kid. That's how that came about. Being a little boy, fascination with the B3 organist bass pedals. Drums are so musical and broad in scope, and I saw that all the elements of drums, I said, to do that, I have three sets of melodies I can be, create music with by myself. And I created what I call the Hydra. It's a five bass drum setup. Now this is only three, and I call this setup triple threat. So, and that comes from an inspiration of watching that B3 organist play those bass pedals, totally independent of his hands, much like drummers do it, totally independent of our hands, and playing a whole nother bass pattern on the bass drum that he did on the bass keyboards. Believe it or not, Moffat even applies this multiple bass drum approach in some of Michael Jackson's biggest hits, like Beat It. and even in his drum solo from the end of his Drumio Billy Jean performance. Oh. 
Sugarfoot often had to play songs live that were originally written on drum machines. This required him to not only bring life to a steady and repetitive groove, but also to be tasteful in how he decided to recreate these tracks live. Check out this early footage of Moffat playing with the Jacksons in 1984, adding some new hits to their classic, I Want You Back. Or in Michael Jackson's Smooth Criminal, here's the drum part from the original studio version, and then listen to how Moffat adds more fills and embellishments into his part. So you might have noticed that I'm using drumless tracks for all of these demos, and we've actually partnered with Moises, which is an app that allows you to remove the drums from all of your favorite songs. We use Moises all the time when we film Drumio videos, and you can even use the app to remove guitar, keys, or vocals. So click the link down in the description if you want to sign up for a Moises membership, or if you're a Drumio member, you'll get access to more than 5,000 songs featuring drumless tracks created with Moises. All of our transcriptions use interactive sheet music, and it's a great way to learn your favorite songs. In the song Thriller, Moffat adds a lot to the drum track that we don't hear in the studio version. Once again, let's listen to the original drum part and then check out what Moffat adds into his live version. And actually in the same track, listen to the hits that Moffat adds in later on. Following his success with Michael Jackson and Madonna, Elton John asked Moffat to join him on tour in 1988, as he was looking for more of an R&B sound from his band. Check out how Sugarfoot changes up Elton John's classic Tiny Dancer with some added syncopation and shots. Or listen to the rudimental groove Moffat would play to start Michael Jackson's They Don't Care About Us. Now, it's obvious that Michael Jackson loved working with Jonathan Moffat. They had a deep friendship that spanned their entire career together. And listen to Jonathan talk about why Michael always asked him to perform live. That's about playing with the emotion. Right. When, you, when you fill in the space with a lot of notes and stuff like that, it's hard to make it emotive. You know, you can't uh, feel it. And that's what I, where I feel it. And that's what um, one of the things that got me to working with Michael. He loved that, that right. aspect. Especially Billy Jean was his most important song to play live. And he said, nobody plays it like foot like you hmm. because that's your spirit. It's just, it's just different, you know? I, because I, I focus on spirit when I'm playing. Everything is about spirit. I mean, there's techniques and different things I'm doing. As far as the groove and when I'm there to play for the patterns, I'm playing about the spirit. When Jonathan was originally auditioning for the Jacksons, one of the things they loved about his drumming was his ability to combine multiple drum parts that were overdubbed. Sugarfoot has said that in the drum machine part in the original track, it's written as three layers of drums. But when he was playing this live, he wanted to cover as many parts as possible, so he arranged this version for himself. I wanted it to be keep pumping and moving and excite Michael more, so I did like this. Whoa! 
Hey, hey, you have a ticket to ride that train? Hey, uh, how, how did I do? <laughs> yeah, nothing. You're close. You're, you're pretty close. There's you got, a few beats on the bass from you leaving out, you know. So you got to come so show me how it's done. Let me, let me, yeah, okay. I'll show, yeah, show you. come sit but down. You're almost there. You're almost there. I got I to gotta pay a fine because yeah. they played your kit. The main thing is about the consistency since the bass drum is so busy. It's got to be even and smooth, hypnotic, yeah. you know. Let me show you. You're almost there. There's a couple beats you're leaving out on the bass drum during the course of the end part of it. And let me see how we go. Kind of that, that's how it's done. <laughs> it's got to be smooth and even. Very cool. That's it. You almost so, had it, though. So the original is, it's a drum machine. It's a drum machine. So when you played this with Michael, did he say anything about your version of this groove, or did he ask for anything specific? He never asked for anything. He liked the extra energy that the extra movement I added in there with the extra beats. But the record is cool. Yeah. But I say for live, it's always got to have that extra thing to make people respond more. And you're not getting out of the context of the song. That's what I did. Michael never asked me to do nothing, but he turned around. And, yeah, he <laughs> he gave you the nod of approval. Well, that's that's the real way to play. Want to be starting something? You did pretty good, though, man. <laughs> One of the first things people notice about Sugarfoot when they watch him perform is his large drum kit setup and the way he sets up some of his cymbals including the ones behind him. He also has a very interesting way of choking his cymbals. I use them more than just crashes. I use them for catching. I can use them like that. So I use them musically as well. Moffat says he came up with this kung fu inspired approach in a marathon late night practice session as a way to free up his other hand from having to choke the cymbal. Once he got it down, he started using it as a way to further accent what the Jacksons were doing live. Once in an interview, he said, with the Jacksons, I'll use it to accent certain moments before the vocal chorus. Or when Michael makes a move and stops real quick, I'll accent that with a catch. You've got to do it fast and drop back into the rhythm without breaking time. He explains that you simply let your drumstick guide your hand to the cymbal as you move to choke it. He's incorporated this into some of Michael's biggest hits like Beat It and Billie Jean. Backlash, whiplash, I call it. I always wanted to be a superhero like the ones I read about and inspired me in the comic books. So I said, on the drums, I wish I could be a superhero. This extra bit of flair and showmanship adds a lot to these tracks when played live. And ultimately, it added to the spectacle that was a Michael Jackson live concert. And he can do these behind the back shots very quickly, like in this drum solo from his first Drumeo visit. Along with the theatrics, ability to bring new life to the drum machine parts, and his advanced foot technique, he also has some pretty fast hands that could impress both drummers and non-drummers alike. Sugarfoot's most lasting contribution might be his playing on many of the biggest tours the world has ever seen. Do they expect you to play the parts off the records, or are they asking you to come in and just let you have your, your way with whatever you want to do? Nine times out of ten, Michael wants you to play like the record. Uh, Madonna was like that to a degree, but allowed some freedom. I could express and do different feels and things like that, a different swing of attitude. But Elton John was a different story. Elton John rock and roll. Elton John was total free time, total rock and roll. When we say rocket man, we rock this man. Rocket man, burning out of streets all here alone.
After a chance occurrence and audition with the Jacksons, he joined them for several tours from the Destiny Tour in 1979 to the Victory Tour in 1984. It was at this point that Madonna invited Sugarfoot to join her on her debut tour. He would once again showcase his strength for emulating and evolving drum machine parts as he performed some of her biggest hits. He ended up being featured on her Dress You Up music video. on her controversial but groundbreaking Blonde Ambition tour in 1990, and at her historic Live Aid performance in 1985. Then he was asked to join Elton John on tour in 1988. And on drums, we have someone real special. Just listen to the bass drum, folks. Mr. Jonathan Sugarfoot Muffet. And also recorded drums on Elton's record, Sleeping With The Past. And as I mentioned before, Elton was going for a different R&B inspired sound, and that's evident in Moffat's drumming on this record. Check out his intro groove from the single, Sacrifice. Moffat shared the stage with George Michael on his cover to cover tour and also joined the singer for his Rock and Rio performance in 1991. But his primary gig always seemed to be performing with Michael Jackson. He performed with Michael on his legendary History World Tour and many other memorable performances up until 2009. Luckily, we have so much great footage as a reminder of how monumental those productions were. Sugarfoot was also going to be the drummer for Michael's This Is It concert residency at the O2 Arena in 2009. He recalls speaking to Michael one night after rehearsal. Michael and I spoke the night before he passed away at the end of the rehearsal, about 1, 1.30 at night. We had just finished rehearsals. He came to me specifically smiling and laughing. He's so excited. He said, everything sounds great. Everyone sounds great. And he's very excited. It's coming together really well. We had just done our first run through. And he told me he was excited. I'm so excited. We ran out of time, but we will pick it up tomorrow. Thank you so much. And I say, well, thank you so much, Michael. I'm glad you still enjoy my work. He says, still enjoy your work. I've always enjoyed your work. I, I love your playing. That's why you're here. That's why you're here. He said, and I can't wait. So we'll be ready for tomorrow. Good job. And everybody, I love everybody. I love you, Foot. I love you, Foot. And I say, I love you too, Michael. And I gave him a hug not even knowing that was going to be the last hug I received from him. And uh, I'll always love Michael. Beyond his historic live performances, his drumming also lives on in many incredible recordings he's made. He's kept a steady studio schedule, collaborating with a ton of artists over his three plus decades playing professionally. One particular drum beat that's been sampled more than 45 times is what he played on Don't Stop the Music. This groove has been sampled by TLC, P. Diddy, Eve, Alicia Keys, Beyonce, and many others. All right, there you have it, the genius of Jonathan Sugarfoot Moffat. Hopefully you enjoyed this deep dive into Jonathan's drumming and learned something along the way. Now, before you go, make sure you leave a comment right below this video and let me know one thing that you've learned from listening to Sugarfoot. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit those like and subscribe buttons along with that notification bell so you're all up to date with everything happening here on the Dremio channel. Jonathan, do you have anything to add for all the drummers out there? My main advice is to spend time with your instrument. Make it part of you. 
extension of your soul, extension of your physicality. You won't know your instrument or how to exhibit it unless you spend time to learn it. I said, work on you, your playing, always, never, it's never ending. You never know enough and you never know too much. Awesome, well, there you have it. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Jonathan, thanks so much for being a part of it. And with that, we'll see you all in the next one. Cheers. Love to all. You've been hit by, you've been struck